joining me from her kitchen. Hi, Miss Reba. How's it going? Oh, it's going great. How are you doing today? Doing well. I'm not going to lie. I'm very excited to be in your kitchen. So what goes down in there for you, Reba? Well, it's where we cook and have coffee in the morning, and it's our gathering spot. Whenever we have any function here at the house, this is where the kitchen, everybody hangs out at the kitchen. I probably It's probably like that at your house, too. I know, but I love all those photographs back there. You just seem to be surrounded. It seems very cozy, just like you. It is. My, uh, my house is a very cozy house. You, can, uh, you don't have to take your shoes off when you come in. Just make yourself at home. Uh, why re-release this album now? What was, what was the significance of the 30 year anniversary? Well, 1990 was a very special year for me. I had my son, Shelby. It was the first time I got to work with Tony Brown, my producer who produced this album. Uh, we, we had a wonderful time doing the recording of the album and then doing the Rumor Has It tour. So it was, it was a great year. The album had huge success, four singles off of it. Fancy, which is, I'm, I think I'm, that's the song that I'm more known for than any other song I've recorded. So it was just a very special album. And, uh, I'm really glad that they wanted to re-release it. What do you think it is about that song, Fancy, that resonates with everybody? I think Fancy is a song that everybody resonates with because it's a rag to riches story. I like to always say she was a kept woman. I like and, um, very happy and helping other girls that, that might be faced in, uh, to be put in that situation, but she's helping them out now. That's the continuation of the fancy story. And Reba, I've always loved you, but I love you even more knowing that you were in Walmart signing your albums. I live at Walmart. If I were to round the corner and see Reba McIntyre sitting there, I think I would lose my mind. How did all that come <laughs> about? And what was the reaction? Well, they didn't know we were coming. And so it wasn't advertised. So we just kind of slipped in and did that. But this one girl, as we were taking pictures with the, you know, the bright orange vinyl record, um, she was standing there and looking like everybody's gathered and why? And she had her album right there and she wanted me to sign it. And so I turned around, and I said, sure, I'll sign it. And she still, it didn't register to her that we were all there doing what we were doing, but she was uh, really tickled. She got an autographed album. <laughs> and I was thrilled to get to do it for her. Is there something too with your talking voice? Because it's so distinctive. Like, I feel like if I even heard your voice in Walmart, it might freak me out in a great way. Well, that does, that's my giveaway. I never can go incognito because if I ever talk, everybody goes, that's Reba. That's Reba. There's Reba right there. Um, well, you mentioned that uh, 1990 was special because that's when your son Shelby was born. Um, take me back. What do you remember most about that? Did you know you wanted kids? No, I didn't want children until um, 1989. I just had a strong desire to have a child. And 1990, uh, February 23rd, here he came. And uh, my last show was December the 3rd, and I had to go on bed rest. Um, so I couldn't do anything the rest of December, January, and February until he was born. But boy, I'd have hung by my toenails from the ceiling for that little boy. Sweetest thing I've ever heard. And now at 30, oh, you're a grandmom now. How about the new baby Husky? So cute, Reba. They're both adorable, Watson and Belle. Uh, they're good dogs. They're, they, uh, they're very obedient and they mind very well. Shelby's a good daddy. And, uh, but Belle is a beautiful Husky and Watson is a Corgi. So they're different in looks and sizes, but they get along very well and have a great time together. I'm obsessed with corgis. I love their buns. Me they too. I love them. Buns, the way they walk. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Reba, what about Shelby dating in the past? I feel like you're the number one lady in his life. Was it ever funny, him growing up and what girls he would bring home? Were you protective? Oh, I don't think I had to be protective. Shelby has had lots of great girlfriends. Uh, he's in a very serious relationship right now. And I love Marissa. She's a great gal. And, uh, He's, he's just, I guess he'll always just be my little boy, no matter how big of the race cars that he gets in to race. He's a professional race car driver. So I, I do get a little tense and a little worried about him, but I put him in God's hands and, and uh, God will take care of him, I know. Did you know growing up he was going to be a professional race car driver? I, mean, I think that's one of the coolest. Not at all. Not until, not at all. Not until he got into college. 
uh, he went to Tucson to go to college and then he came home from Thanksgiving. He said, I don't want to go back to school. And I said, who doesn't want to go back to college? That's not, that's not right. I said, what do you want to do? He said, I want to be a race car driver. I said, where did that come from? He said, mom, you know, I've always loved cars. I said, yeah, but I didn't know you wanted to do that. And so we, uh, we pursued it and he's done very well. Wow. So as a little kid, I just pictured him like racing his tricycle or whatever really fast. Like there was no early signs. No, but we did, uh, Scott Borchetta told us to get him a go-kart, so we did, and he would just zip up and down the driveway like a little gnat, just <laughs> zzz, zzz, scary as it could be, but he loves it. Let's talk about that original album cover. I love the hat, very Barbara Streisand of you. That's exactly where we got the idea. Barbara Streisand had an album cover or a photo shoot. I don't remember which one it was. But Sandy Speaker, who did my hair and all my wardrobe, my clothes, she had found that and she said, wouldn't this be fun? Well, back then I was known for the big hair, all jacked up to Jesus. And so I said, won't that be a little weird? She said, I don't know, let's try it. So everybody was for it and it was the last set up for the shoot that day. And they loved it so much that they chose it for the album cover. And let's do some fashion flashback because we love your fashion. Okay. Thank you. Tell me about the purple number. This is the CMAs. The three looks in one go, we were losing our minds. Matt Logan designed that. Uh, Justin McIntosh said, would you be up to us trying some new things for fancy? Because I've been doing it since 1990, or 91 is when I started doing the red dress. And I said, well, sure. So Matt came up with the design of the three changes. So I loved it. I thought it was fun. And then you number went to Yeah. Uh, with the red dress underneath the lavender robe. And then, voila, va, va, yeah. va, boom. The jumpsuit. I, it, Matt did a great job of that, and it was nerve-wracking as it, it could be, live, on television, and it worked. Wow. <laughs> this one. Tell me what your dad said about this. Well, after the award show in 94 or 95, we got back to the office and daddy got out of the car and he's, cause we met there. And he said, Reba, did you have that dress on backwards? And I said, good Lord, daddy, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so Reba, I have to tell you the funniest thing. So I got this head and Kelly's first day, Kelly Clarkson's first day on her set, I was going over there. And this is our dear friend, Melissa Peterman's head that she brought over when she was co-host with me. So I jumped in to Kelly's show, but it was really long when they opened the door. So I kept having to dance with you a really long way down the thing. She's so much fun. I know she'd love that. <laughs> and speaking of loving, I have a little surprise guest for you here. Kelly Pooh, what are you up to, girl? Hello, Peterman, thank you. Kit, I need my Reba on a stick back. I know. I need it back. <laughs> Melissa, tell the story where you got that. Um, uh, Reba was doing a concert back in Minnesota. I think it was at Mystic Lake Casino. And uh, I was there for the summer. So I came to the show. We were going to do our little bit on stage. And I come on the stage. And you can see this head. I don't know how far back it was. This girls, these sweet girls were holding up the Reba head. I would get on mic and I say, I will pay $20 for that Reba on a stick right now. And they brought that head up to the stage. I paid them, uh, best 20 bucks I ever spent. <laughs> and I made, we had, I made you, we took it on the plane. I took it back to Nashville. You had to help me put it in a shipping box. And cause I'm like, I'm taking this home. Oh, this is coming with me everywhere. And my favorite picture is the picture of the real Reba putting the big Reba on a stick in a box and you know, getting it ready to ship. <laughs> Okay, wait, seeing you two, and please tell me we got a chance. What's going on with the Reba reboot? Everybody wants it. I've got you two here. Please tell me it's a possibility. Well, we would love it. And we've talked to the other cast members. They would love it too. And the producers would love it. So now we just got to keep going up the food chain and seeing if the producers, we can talk to the owners and maybe hopefully getting us back to a, a reboot. Heck, Melissa and I would love it if it's a two-hour special. We don't care. We just like to hang out and have fun and play and work together. And what about the podcast, Melissa? Talking about the podcast that you and Reba are doing. I'm so excited. You guys are getting incredible guests. They were doing this fantastic podcast for Spotify called Living and Learning. 
And um, it's so much fun because it really is. It's about getting these great guests on that we want to learn something about, subjects we want to hear about. And we got, we had uh, Rita Moreno, Darius Rucker, um, Glennon Doyle, Jane Fonda. Like, it's just been so incredible. I can't wait for the premiere on September the 21st where everybody can listen to it on Spotify because we did, we had a blast. And, and I got to listen to the trailer the other day. It was so much fun. We were laughing at us laughing. <laughs> now that's, that's when you know you're having a good time. Dolly Parton even came and visited with us. Friendship is our first episode. Gotcha. And who's gonna be on the friendship episode? Leslie Jordan. Yes. Wait, he had, last? we had to, we could have done Speaking of a two-hour uh, miniseries or reunion movie, we could have done a two-hour just interview with Leslie Jordan because that man is just so full of joy and sunshine. And he did episodes, he did two episodes of Reba. And I just remember he would walk in every day and just be like, I didn't know y'all started so early. Uh, well, Reba, do you love your surprise with Melissa? We were so excited about that. I do. I've missed you, Melissa. I hadn't seen you since last week. <laughs> um, but for real, Reba, congratulations. Um, this, there's no other album that deserves to be re-released -re uh, like this one. And I'm waiting for my vinyl copy because I think they're sold out like everywhere. So I'm going to have to, do I know somebody that can maybe help me out? You know somebody. Do we know anybody that Melissa can get an <laughs> album from? Nope. They said nope. I don't know. Okay. Oh. All right. That's fine. Stay in line at Walmart like the rest of us, Melissa. I will. I will. Uh, well, great to see you both. Please check out their new podcast on Spotify coming up and Reba's album is out everywhere now. And Melissa, I will get your Reba on a stick back to you, but I love both of you ladies so much. And thank you so much for chatting. Love you, kid. Thanks, love you, Reba. Thanks.